We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search isn't for a candidate at all. So stop your search and start matching with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is the matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to Indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. When I started podcasting, an online store was the furthest thing from my mind. But now that I'm selling the manifest planners, it is so easy, all because I use Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. So from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to, oh my God, I just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash manifest. Welcome back to another episode of Manifest with Tori Simone. I'm your host, Tori Simone, And if you guys are watching on YouTube, then you will see that we are back at the beach. We are at Sea Isle at the beach, just where life is good, where I am so happy. I just love it down here in Seattle. So it just feels really good to be back at the beach. And you guys will also notice that I got my hair done. Um, so I went a little bit lighter for the summertime. And I love it. This is the lightest that I've been since I dyed my hair dark since being blonde. And when Vin first showed me, I was like, oh my God, Vin, it's so light. And I was like, I need like to get used to it. And I'm definitely getting used to it. And I, I definitely love it. So I'm really happy to have some lighter hair for the summer and be, you know, cute and fun and sun kissed and all that good stuff. And I'm also 26. The last time I talked to you guys, I was 25. Five, so it's a whole year later. I'm just kidding. But it was my birthday last week on Wednesday. And yeah, I had a very chill birthday. I will get into that. And this episode definitely will leave that. But nonetheless, it was a really great day. It was a really great birthday. And I'm just really grateful to be entering my next year of life. I turned 26, um, which means that this is my 27th year of life. And that's, I, I think I say this every year because my grandma, when my grandma always says that, she's like, you're entering the next year of your life when you turn an age, so like you turn 26, so you've lived 26 years. So now you're entering your 27th year, which I guess makes sense because when you turn one, you've lived a whole year. So you're entering your second year of life by the time you turn one. That's like how she explained it to me. And it makes sense in a weird way. Also, let's talk about something weird. Today is Friday, April 5th, as I'm recording this episode, and I'm in New Jersey. My best friend, Katie, who lives in New York, and one of my friends, Alyssa, who's in Pennsylvania, texted me like 20 minutes ago, and they were like, oh my God, did you, they both texted me separately, and they were like, oh my God, did you just feel that earthquake? Apparently, there was a 4.8 earthquake in New Jersey, was like the epicenter of it. I didn't feel a thing. I was with an electrician at the studio. So I didn't feel a thing. And I asked him, I was like, did you feel an earthquake? And he was like, nope, not a thing. So now I'm a little like freaked out because I am at the beach and there was just an earthquake and there's really not earthquakes to begin with in Jersey. So like, it's very weird that there was one anyway, but now I'm like a little afraid that like, if there is like, I'm right on the beach by the water. So like if there's a tsunami watch, I would know about it. Right. I don't know. I'm a little, little nervous, but and with the eclipse, the eclipse is today. The eclipse is today, Monday, April 8th. As you guys are listening to this, I'm recording on the 5th. So for me, it's in three days, but for you guys, the eclipse is today on the 8th. And I don't know. I keep seeing weird stuff on TikTok, like what's going to happen during the eclipse and like earthquake and eclipse. I'm spending too much time on the internet, which we will also talk about today in this episode. So let's just dive right into how to be more mindful in your day-to-day -day life, how to add mindfulness to your daily life. Because me 
fear mongering right now with like, oh my God, an earthquake and eclipse. This is me being mindless, not mindful. And we want to be mindful. So all the time we hear buzzwords like wellness, mindfulness, manifestation, intentional, like I'm in the wellness space. What is that? And I'm victim to that, right? Like I call this a wellness podcast. What is that? Mindfulness. I'm trying to be more mindful. What does that even mean? More mindful. Like my, I have my mind right here. Like how do you be more mindful? Manifestation. We always hear, oh, I'm manifesting this. And I actually just made a whole episode about how to actually manifest in your day-to-day life. If that's something that you want to listen to, I'll link it below. And intentional. Oh, I want to be really intentional with my time, my energy, with who I, who I hang out with. And my script actually that I typed before this episode came to fruition was about how to be more intentional with your time, energy, actions, and boundaries. I can still put that out if you are interested, but it kind of evolved into this and I like this more. So we hear these buzzwords all the time, so much so that we can even hear it and it sounds overused or chuggy and remember when girl boss first became a term and people really liked it and then it started getting used too much and then it became like a joke and everyone was like oh what you're a girl boss and I feel like these really buzzy words can sometimes get the same rep as those phrases because they just get so overused that the meaning dilutes with each use and it can be meaningless over time but Mindfulness can actually be a lot of things. And for me this week, especially, it's been very top of mind. Probably not for the reasons you think. So all week I have been so grumpy, like for real, just in the worst mood all freaking week. I've been really angry at everything. I have been set off by the littlest things. Like yesterday I had a really weird interaction with one of my neighbors at Avalon, like at the next to the studio, like the commercial space. It was just a really weird interaction. Like it wasn't bad or malicious. It was just weird. And I got so mad over it and it like ruined my day or I should say at least like an hour. I was just like thinking about it and thinking about it. And I was like, Oh, like it it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm not an angry person whatsoever. So like that was really weird. Someone yelled at me yesterday on the road because I turned right and they yelled at me. I don't know why. And I started to cry. Um, I woke up like cold and I was really angry. And the other night I was like afraid to go to sleep. So and like I was making up all these scenarios in my head and then I was lashing out on my boyfriend and I was making my problems, his problems. And he's like, I don't even know where you're coming from. Like everything is fine. Like I don't know what is going on. So like all week I've just been really an emotional mess and I can't even blame it on my cycle because I'm nowhere near my period. You know what I mean? Like it just, it, this, it's not making any sense. And I've just been really emotional all week. And I made a list of why I think so. And I came up with seven reasons as to why I think I've been super emotional all week. The first one, and this is after making the list, this is the reason why. Like I was able to pinpoint it and this is why. I spent my entire day on Monday in bed all day until 4 p.m. I had to get up and I had to go teach my classes at Stride. I taught spin and then I taught a 30-minute yoga. And I... If I didn't have those classes, I would have stayed in bed all day long. And I know it sounds awesome. Like, oh my God, what a good, what a good thing. Like to spend all day in bed. I would love to do that. But actually it ruined my day, my week, my mood. Like it, it's not been a good week because of this. It was raining on Monday. I could do my work from the bed. So I was like, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to treat myself and I'm just going to stay in bed all day today. In the moment, it felt really, really nourishing to my body. But in reality, it just threw me off for the entire week. It threw off all of my emotions for the entire week. And it just created a horrible domino effect for me. Then to the point that I stayed in bed on Tuesday And then on Wednesday was my birthday, so I took it easy on Wednesday. And then yesterday was Thursday. I moved down to the beach and, like, for the summer, brought all my stuff down to the beach. And then I had, like, the panic set in that I was opening my studio in a week from today, a soft opening. And the house, like, wasn't really – I don't know. Like, I just – like, I got here and I just started to, like, panic. So then I was like – 
cleaning my room, cleaning the house, doing laundry, just like doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I, I was just like, I just felt so like out of my own body yesterday. It was such a weird feeling. So anyway, what I'm getting at is that my Monday being really mindless affected the rest of my week. The second thing that I attribute my weird week of emotions to is that I haven't worked out all week, except for the classes that I taught on Monday night, which was, I could really only attribute spin. Um, I have not moved my body at all, all week to the point where my aura ring was like, are you going to get up? Like get up girl. Cleaning yesterday was the most amount of movement that I've done all week. And that's so unlike me because even in last week's episode, I was like, my, my yoga is the thing that makes me so happy. And it does. But when I just stayed in bed all day Monday and then I didn't, you know, I did the same thing Tuesday and same thing Wednesday. And then yesterday I was traveling here. I just didn't really work out this week. I didn't prioritize it. I chose to be really, really mindless. So yeah, I haven't had any movement, no endorphins, none of that. So I chose to be really mindless and not work out. I think that's contributed a lot to like my weird emotions. The third thing is I've been consuming a lot of social media content as a result of being really lazy and not wanting to get out of bed. And in the moment, mindlessly scrolling on social media sounds like a really good idea until it's three hours later and I'm filled with comparison or making the realization that I just wasted three hours of my life looking at absolute junk. Like literally I just kept waiting for a video that I like to come up on my for you page. And I was like, I don't like anything that I'm seeing. And whenever I leave social media, I never feel better than when I went on. So that should tell me everything that I need to know. I was mindlessly scrolling and it drained my dopamine as a result. And I just logged off feeling way worse. The fourth thing was I also wasn't giving myself the best self care because I was in bed. So we can see how this all goes back to number one, how I spent my Monday in bed. Okay. And I'm also not saying that like, I don't have lazy days. I do. But on days like a Monday where I really do, I love Mondays and like, I love my routines that I have on Mondays, but this one, it was raining and I was like, I'm just going to not do that today. I chose to be mindless. It's like fucked my whole week. So the fourth thing, I wasn't giving myself the best self-care because I stayed in bed. I was just like, I'm not doing anything. Like, do I need to change my clothes? Like, do I need to put on different pajamas? Do I need to go take a shower? Do I need to go wash my face? Like I was just in such a slump Mm -hmm. on Wednesday. I jumped out of bed. I took a shower. I washed and curled my hair. I put on a matching set and I felt pretty good. And then after that, I decided that I wanted to go get a coffee, get a breakfast sandwich, like take care of myself. But Before that, when I was mindless, I succumbed to the, I don't really feel like it phase and I didn't do anything and I felt like shit because of it. The fifth thing that I think attributed to my weird week of emotions was that my chores were piling up, specifically my laundry. I had a lot of laundry that I wanted to do before I moved down to the beach and with, and with each day of it passing where I wasn't doing my laundry, it would just pile up more and more by the day. And then that made me want to do it less and less because it kept piling up and then I had more to do. And then that stressed me out more. And then I was just like, Oh my God, I have to do it, but I really don't want to do it. And now it's getting to an overwhelming amount. And like, Oh my God, we all know what that feels like. And then also on top of that, like I didn't want to do my dishes. My space was just like a little more cluttered than I like it to be. I just didn't want to do anything. You guys, like I was just in such a slump and I was being really mindless. The sixth thing is that it was raining And I did want to include this because weather, it really does affect me. Like I could never live in the Pacific Northwest where it's rainy and gloomy all the time. Like I, I, I could not live there. Like I, I give you guys a lot of credit that do live there because it truly could never be me. And I also think the fact that it was raining was a really, really big reason that I stayed in bed on Monday because it just, it was like, why am I getting up? You know what I mean? And then it poured for three days straight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, torrential downpour did not stop raining. And it's just really easy to not want to get out of bed on days like that. So I was really mindless and I stayed in bed and it just snowballed into all of this. And I literally was texting my mom this morning. I was like, I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm just like pissed off. I'm angry. Like I just have these weird emotions. And then as I like was ranting to my mom, I felt so much better. And she was just like, 
I wasn't ranting to her. Like I wasn't mad at her, obviously. And I wasn't like saying like mean things to my mom. I was just saying to her, like, I feel like this, da, 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 da. And then as soon as I got it all out there, I just was like, oh my God, I feel so much better. So that had something to do with it too. Like it just helped to vent a little bit. But then the seventh thing that I think is that Stride, my studios, they soft open a week from, well, they open this Saturday, the 13th of April. So it's a soft opening. So it's not the grand opening. It's just like a modified off season schedule. Not many people are down yet. So it's just like a very gentle opening to the studios. So this is the reality that I've talked about on my podcast many times is that I always have a little bit of a meltdown before my Stride studios down at the shore open up for the season. I have one every year, every year I try my best to avoid it, but inevitably it just happens. And I feel like this week was my meltdown week for the studio. So that on top of everything else, I just think it's bound to happen. And this was my week of my meltdown. So with all of that being said, did we notice a theme? Because I sure did. The theme was that I was mindless. I was mindless all week. But I was really especially mindless as soon as I woke up on Monday morning. And that snowballed into a really big snowball effect where in the moment I was like, I'm going to do something nice and nourishing to myself, like stay in bed on a Monday morning when I knew in the back of my head, I shouldn't really do this because it's going to derail my week. And I shut that voice down. And I tried to go out of alignment with myself and justify myself and be like, you know what? This is going to be really good for me. And I had a very relaxing weekend. It's not like I did anything crazy, may I add. So it's not like I was drained from the weekend. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search isn't for a candidate at all. So stop your search and start matching with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is the matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work and use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't help you just hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. I've been using Indeed for years, and one of the things I love the most about it is that it just makes hiring really easy. So all I have to do is post a job description, and the candidates that match exactly what I'm looking for get sent right to me. So I don't have to filter through anyone that's like unqualified or anyone that isn't exactly what I'm looking for. Like I get exactly what I'm looking for, and then the hard part actually becomes hiring the best person because everyone is almost overqualified for the job. So I really love it. I get to leverage over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day. So the Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more that you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than three and a half million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Something that I'm really prioritizing going into this summer is hydration. I talked about this a little bit on last week's podcast episode as well, but I really want to make sure that I'm staying hydrated, not only for the obvious benefits, but also because it just makes me feel like I've accomplished something in my day. And that leads me to accomplishing something else in my day. And I get really bored of just the taste of water. So I like to add stuff into my water and something that I love to add in is liquid IV. My personal favorite right now is the white peach. There's just something about it that's so summery and so delicious, but also so hydrating. And you guys are probably going to think I'm like crazy when I say this, but there's something about liquid IV that makes their water taste more wet and more hydrating than any other water I've ever tried in my life. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but you have to try it for yourself to know what I'm talking about. It is just the most hydrating thing ever. And I always feel so much better when I complete a liquid IV packet. What I really love is that one stick and 16 ounces of water is all you need to hydrate you better than water alone. It has three times the electrolytes of any leading sports drink. They have no artificial sweeteners. They have zero sugar. They 
They contain eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. It's non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. So however you hydrate, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MANIFEST at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code MANIFEST at liquidiv.com. If you're tired of cycling through ineffective skincare trends and overcomplicated routines, then I'm so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, OneSkin. Their products make it easy to keep your skin healthy while looking and feeling your best. No complicated routine necessary. No more multiple step protocols, just simple, scientifically validated solutions. The secret is One Skin's proprietary OS01 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. And they've gotten several studies to back it up. I've been using their products for a while now, and I am hooked. And don't just take my word for it because OneSkin has over 4,000 five-star reviews and were recognized by Fast Company as one of the most innovative brands in 2024. For a limited time, you'll get 15% off your first OneSkin purchase using the code MANIFEST when you check out at oneskin.co. Try OneSkin and enjoy younger, healthier skin without all the extra steps. Leveraging their in-house cutting-edge R&D platform, they are able to measure the efficacy of age reversal molecules in their lab. In a third-party 12-week clinical study performed by a third-party research organization, OS01 FACE was clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier, improve skin health markers, and diminish visible signs of aging. Wrinkles were diminished by 87% of users. I've been gifting OS01 since the holidays, and I can tell you that all the people that I've gifted it to have had amazing results, and they are hooked on this product. Their skin is more youthful, it's glowing, it's bouncing, and they are obsessed with this product. It really, truly works. And that's because OneSkin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, OneSkin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code MANIFEST at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code MANIFEST. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them and please support our show by saying that we sent you. When I started podcasting, an online store was the furthest thing from my mind. But now that I'm selling the manifest planners, it is so easy, all because I use Shopify. (laughs) Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. So from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to, oh my God, I just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. I love Shopify. When I first started selling the Manifest Planners, I was not sure which website I wanted to use for my e-commerce store. And I'm so glad that I chose Shopify because they have made it so easy and they made the website look so professional and they are so user-friendly. And I think you guys would be amazed to find out how many gigantic brands use Shopify because that is how good they are. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is a global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash manifest. But I made a mindless decision the first thing I did on Monday morning, and it has derailed my entire week as a result of it. I made mindless decisions that benefited the laziness of the moment or the unmotivated side of me and in turn, it ended up being the worst thing that I could have done for myself because here I am five days later with unstable emotions, not much progress in my studio when I needed progress and I'm taking it out on everyone. Like I decided to be lazy and I'm making it everyone's problem. I decided to be mindless and I'm making it everyone's problem and that's not fair to others. It's not fair to me. And it's all because I wasn't mindful in the moment. So let's tie this back to the title. What is mindfulness? 
Mindfulness is essentially making intentional decisions even when you don't feel like it, you don't see the point, maybe you feel lazy, unmotivated, etc. Mindfulness can be done in a multitude of ways and it doesn't have to mean what you might think, even if it can mean the same thing. For example, when I say mindfulness, I tend to think of meditation because that's something that is very mindful. You sit, you're alone with your mind. And sure, meditation is a fantastic way to be mindful. In meditation, you can have a strategy session with yourself so that, you're, so that your daily actions are intentional. And that's a great way to begin mindfulness. But mindfulness can show up in so many forms. So to put it very, very simply, being mindful is making mindful decisions to set you up for success throughout your entire day. Some examples of mindfulness, setting an alarm the night before you go to bed, not snoozing your alarm when you wake up, saying an affirmation when you wake up, taking three deep breaths before you get out of bed, drinking a glass of water before getting out of bed, journaling or brain dumping, washing your face, brushing your teeth, working out, meditating, writing a to-do list, planning your day, planning your week, planning your month. How you speak to yourself and speaking kindly to yourself. How deciding how you want to interact with others, leading with love, gratitude, kindness, empathy, understanding. Going for a walk is mindful. What you eat is mindful. What you drink, what you wear, doing your hair, doing your makeup. Those are all mindful activities. How you type out your emails, the tone that you put in your emails, how you reply to your text messages. When you reply to your text messages, are you putting boundaries on that? When you scroll on social media, what you post on social media, what you share with your friends via social media, what hobbies you partake in, calling a friend to chat, breathing, choosing to reset your breath when things happen outside of your control. This list goes on and on and on and on. And honestly, this list was really easy to make. The point of this list is to show you that there are tons of ways to be mindful, but it's about making the best decisions for you to intentionally set you up for the best day that you can have. And if you can't tell from my why I had a shitty week list, bad things in life have a snowball effect. And that's why when we're having a bad morning, that bad morning then becomes a bad day, right? It just feels like it's one bad thing after another and that you just can't catch a freaking break. A bad day can turn into a bad tomorrow and then a bad tomorrow can feel like a bad week and then a bad week can feel like a bad life. But the good news is that good things in life also have a snowball effect probably a bigger one, honestly. If you end and start your day with positive, mindful actions, your good feeling will compound all day long and your good morning becomes a good day. Your good day turns into a good week and a good week turns into what feels like a good life. And it takes one moment of mindfulness to completely turn around your bad day into a good day and ultimately a great life. So how do you begin? I'm going to give you one tip for beginning of adding mindfulness into your day. I truly believe that it begins the night before you go to bed by setting an alarm. Even on days that you don't have anything to do, set a late alarm for the day. Like if you want to sleep in tomorrow and that's your intention and you're being mindful and you're saying, I'm going to sleep in tomorrow, give yourself an 11 a.m. alarm. You know what I mean? Like Just give yourself some reason to get up because you are letting yourself be mindful the night before and signaling to your brain, hey, I have a life to wake up to tomorrow and I'm going to get up and live that life. Then in the morning when your alarm goes off, don't be mindless and click snooze. It's easy to be mindless. If there's one thing we all know, it's that it's easy to be mindless It's harder to be mindful. So choose to be mindful and get up when you say you would because you have this gorgeous life in front of you to be lived. And then from there, it truly is a snowball effect. What will mindfully bring you happiness, intention, and direction into your day? Is it saying an affirmation before you get out of bed? Is it going on a morning walk? Is it sitting outside in the sunlight with tea or coffee? 
You have the power to bring mindfulness intention to the mundane of your daily life and over and over time, this will compound into something so great and a great life is worth living with balanced emotions, a happy, healthy body, a regulated nervous system, balanced sleep. Every good decision is made mindfully. So choose mindfulness and watch your day transform before your eyes, which in turn will absolutely transform your life. Every decision that you make in your life, you have the option to be mindful or mindless when you make it. When I sat down to record this podcast, I was mindful in where I wanted to record it. I'm sitting in front of a slider window where there's a lot of light. If I was mindless, I probably would have just sat up in my room where it was comfortable and cozy, but the lighting is really not the best upstairs in my room right now. If I was mindless today, I wouldn't have planned out, you know, what time I was meeting with an electrician and then what time I was planning this podcast and then what time I have therapy later and then what time I have interviews later today. It's about being mindful in your actions. If I was mindless, I would probably just go down to Wawa and get a coffee that has a lot of sugar. But because I'm trying to be more mindful about my caffeine intake and about the sugar that I'm putting in my body, I have coffee at home that I know it's going in it and I want to make my coffee at home. So it's these small actions of being mindful. And the more mindful you are, the more it becomes a habit. And the more it becomes a habit, the more it becomes part of your daily routine. And the more it becomes part of your daily routine, it builds your own trust within yourself and it builds your own intuition. Being able to trust your own intuition is the most important thing that we can do. When we trust our own voice, our inner guidance, our inner alignment above anything else, that's really when we are in tune with ourselves, whoever ourselves is, whoever that voice in our head is and learning that that's not actually us, which is a whole other topic. Being mindful is trusting your intuition and trusting your gut. And if I listened to myself on Monday morning when I woke up and I said, I'm just going to stay in bed and I listened to that intuition that I had that said, you shouldn't do this. And I said, but it's fine. It's just one day. That one moment snowballed into a whole week of me being so out of whack, so not myself, not working out, lashing out, not being who I am. Just because I wanted to stay in bed one moment and I just chose a mindless moment. That's it. It took one mindless moment and all of my mindfulness went out the window. And I can tell you from personal experience, living a life of mindfulness and intention is so much better and it just feels so much more aligned and authentic with who I am as a person. And there are so many ways to bring mindfulness into your life. And I listed a ton of them in this episode. So try adapting a few and make every decision that you make today. Just try it out today. Try it for the next 20 minutes. Every single decision that you make in the next 20 minutes are going to be completely mindful. You are going to have good intentions when you make these decisions. You are going to be aware that you're making these decisions and you are going to make decisions that truly serve you in the best way possible. You're going to be mindful in your decisions. Observe it for 20 minutes and see what decisions you make and see how mindfulness can creep into your life. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode today. Short, sweet, to the point, exactly what I wanted today. I hope you guys liked it. I want to thank you so much for listening. If you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts specifically, please rate the show five stars and just write a review. It helps the show so much. I really don't know why it does, but it does. It boosts it a lot. If you guys are listening on Spotify, be sure to rate it five stars. Send this to a friend. That also helps the show a lot. Put it on your story. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll have it linked down below. And other than that, that is all that I have for you guys. Happy Manifest Monday. If you guys are watching the eclipse today, stay safe out there. Apparently, this is a big deal. Um, I feel like every time that there's an eclipse, it's like, we won't see this again for another 40 years. And I feel like we hear that like once a year. So I don't know. To me, it feels like we always have eclipses. But this one, according to TikTok, it is a big deal. So anyway, I love you guys. Have a fantastic week. Happy Manifest Monday. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you all next week.
Bye guys. Something that I'm really prioritizing going into the summer is hydration. I talked about this a little bit on last week's podcast episode as well, but I really want to make sure that I'm staying hydrated, not only for the obvious benefits, but also because it just makes me feel like I've accomplished something in my day. And that leads me to accomplishing something else in my day. And I get really bored of just the taste of water. So I like to add stuff into my water and something that I love to add in is liquid IV. My personal favorite right now is the white peach. There's just something about it that's so summery and so delicious, but also so hydrating. And you guys are probably going to think I'm like crazy when I say this, but there's something about liquid IV that makes their water taste more wet and more hydrating than any other water I've ever tried in my life. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but you have to try it for yourself to know what I'm talking about. It is just the most hydrating thing ever. And I always feel so much better when I complete a liquid IV packet. What I really love is that one stick and 16 ounces of water is all you need to hydrate you better than water alone. It has three times the electrolytes of any leading sports drink. They have no artificial sweeteners. They have zero sugar. They are they contain eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. It's a non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. So however you hydrate, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MANIFEST at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code MANIFEST at liquidiv.com.